The plot of Baskerville, uh, the stage play, the stage adaptation is slightly different, only slightly different than the book The Hound of the Baskervilles, uh, written by Sir Arthur Conan Doyle. This particular plot uh, does follow the uh, Sherlock Holmes and Dr. Watson on an adventure like no other uh, to try and catch an evil villain, uh, as they all do. Um, this one follows them through the moors, from the streets of London, through the moors, uh, into some shops in little towns in the middle of nowhere, to the barren landscape, uh, trying to figure out this mystery of the Hound of the Baskervilles, what the, um, the original book was, what the stage adaptation is based on. Part of what uh, these types of shows are really sort of centered around is a lot of escapism. You know, we're looking for just some entertainment oftentimes in, in pieces like this. And so I think that, you know, if we're looking for some tie to, um, you know, social injustices or whether, you know, we should give up capitalism or something like that, not going to be in this show. I think this show is really just about being entertained. I think the original books were a lot uh, in that vein, certainly, and I think that the adaptation that uh, Ken Ludwig has done uh, really sort of s stays in that vein, even though he varies as far as genre, uh, certainly. The particular focus of it, I think, is really based around, hey, let's have a good time, let's try and get lost in this world, let's try and uh, keep up with these characters and keep up with these actors. Um, and at the end, maybe be surprised, maybe not be surprised by what's happening, but have a good time along the way. I think Ken Ludwig obviously uh, is really good at uh, giving us some really easy to uh, access comedy. Um, he's done a couple of adaptations not dissimilar from this. Uh, we did his version of Agatha Christie's Murder on the Orient Express a few years ago. And uh, what he's proven is not only can he write his own original work and do that very well and have it be really engaging and funny, but he can take these adaptations that are, um, you know, in, the, in and of themselves kind of serious works. You know, we are talking about murder here, and that is a serious subject, obviously. But I think the thing that, that Ken does really well is take that seriousness and say, okay, we don't have to take ourselves so seriously. And we can have a good time in the melodrama of the moment. And we can turn that into not only some comedy that pokes fun at the melodramatic art form, but also comedy that pokes fun at um, actors, that pokes fun at theater in general, and, uh, and then be able to shape that into something where the audience is laughing, then maybe they're surprised that something has happened, and then maybe they're a little bit scared at something, who knows? Um, but, you know, at the end of the day, just have a good time. Mr. Ludwig also did a really interesting thing with this adaptation, where um, we have two sort of main characters, Sherlock Holmes and Watson. And then there is a host of other characters uh, played by three different actors. And so each of the actors plays approximately 8 to 15 different characters in the course of the show. And that uh, allows the, uh, the pacing of the show to really be fun and quick. Um, you know, we're not fooling anybody that this one actor is playing 15 different characters. And so there is a bit of joy in that from the audience getting to peek inside that theatrical world a little bit. Um, and, and those three actors, uh, Jim and Katie and Ian, are really doing a fantastic job of making each of those individual characters in and of themselves a, a person, a real person. Uh, and so I think a lot of people are going to be surprised that while um, Katie is playing a cockney 14-year-old boy, um, she is also playing a cockney 35-year-old cab-driving woman, and they're both from the same place, but you would be shocked that they're so entirely different. Looking at Sherlock Holmes, 
uh, being played by Rosie, uh, what Rosie has done with this particular role is uh, she's been able to she's been able to make it about the energy of Sherlock and the intelligence of Sherlock and um, the things that we love about Sherlock. It doesn't matter whether it's a man or a woman; the energy is the same. You know, and that driving force. And Rosie really drives this. There's, it's funny, in the beginning, uh, Rosie really pushes the story and pushes that story, and this is obviously in the writing, but pushes that story away from Sherlock. So the focus is not on Sherlock for a great majority of the show. It's called a Sherlock Holmes mystery, but you'd be surprised in, a, uh, you know, the middle 45 minutes that Sherlock is barely there. But Sherlock pushes it at the front and then at the end really pulls it together and starts to unravel this mystery with, along with everybody else and then brings it to, to its final conclusion. Uh, and, and Rosie is doing just such a fine job at driving this whole story along. We aren't doing anything necessarily to say, hey, look, it's a, it's a woman in this role and, and Sherlock Holmes is now a woman. But we're not the opposite as, as well. We're not trying to disguise the fact really that Rosie is not a man. The production design for this particular show um, is really complicated. Uh, the way that that Ken Ludwig has written the show. It bounces around from place to place very quickly, um, and it, it's very wide, uh, the different places that it has to be. Uh, so what uh, I took on as the scenic designer, um, as well as the lighting designer and the sound designer, is trying to create these spaces, these multitude of spaces, um, in our very tiny stage. Um, and so we have some, we have scenic elements that are moving. Uh, we often don't do a lot of moving scenery in uh, our stage because there isn't a lot of room to put things. And so if it moves in one place, it's got to move off in a different place and we don't have storage off stage. Um, but we have some rotating pieces. We have some pivoting pieces that come on and off. Um, we have a fantastic stage crew that is making that uh, a reality for us. Um, the other thing we've done is we've hired a, a projection artist uh, and uh, he has come in and he's really creating these uh, backdrops for us, these moving backdrops that are really helping us to tell the story and move from scene to scene and place to place and not be sort of limited by um, we can only have these tight spots to delineate where this is going to be. Now we can have that spot of a light and have our actors stay there, but now we have this whole facade of the London streets that are raining down, or we can have this whole facade of the moors during the daytime, big and broad and vast, or we can have the moors at night, which are just ominous and really like looming above us. 